Welcome to DARE Education Awareness, where you can find the latest news on all DARE County schools, the Coastal Studies Institute, and the College of the Albemarle. We keep you informed, entertained, and up-to-date on education in DARE County. The semester experience at the coast is a semester-long residential program for undergraduate students at ECU to come out and spend their entire spring semester on the Outer Banks campus here on Roanoke Island. And the students take classes focused on all aspects of coastal studies, from a humanities focus as well as a harder science focus. They participate in internships here with research faculty at the Coastal Studies Institute and with our partners out in the Outer Banks community. So they get lots of work experience in and some of them even participate in independent research studies during their semester. I chose the semester experience at the coast because I love marine life and the ocean and I just thought it was a great opportunity to learn more about our coast on North Carolina and all the really interesting things at play there. I'm hoping to learn a lot about all the different roles at the Coastal Studies Institute. Since it's interdisciplinary, there's a lot of really interesting people to meet here, from biologists, engineers, and there's a lot to learn just about this one region of North Carolina. During this program, we really want to give students an opportunity to understand a small coastal community. And so when they come out here, it's important for them to kind of get a holistic view of this community and what it really means to live on a barrier island and to perform research on a barrier island. Part of the program includes a seminar style course in which the students take lots of field trips throughout the Outer Banks to learn about the history of the area at a place like the Wright Brothers Memorial, as well as the geomorphology of the area. We'll take them down to Oregon Inlet and kind of explain to them several different inlets throughout the North Carolina coast, why specifically it's called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. We'll go and visit the North Carolina Aquarium and to learn about biological and ecological processes here in the Outer Banks. And then we'll do fun things like go out on a boat and get to learn about some physical field research and surveying opportunities and things like that. I chose the semester experience because I wanted to broaden my palette of where I get my information from. And I want to go somewhere with a completely different scenery and completely different people to learn new things from. My internship is actually pretty cool. I get to do a broad range of everything. I get to dip into marketing strategies. I get to dip into engineering. I get to also dip into pretty much communicating with people of different backgrounds and getting them interested in the things that we do here at the Coastal Studies Institute. So I'm working in the Oceanography and Marine Hydrokinetic Energy Internship, and we are working to collect data for many purposes, including trying to come up with better solutions for renewable energy using the ocean, and uh, specifically like the Gulf Stream. And by doing that, we are like informing a lot of different groups about different ways to use the ocean for energy. ECU undergrads should consider participating in this program because first of all, it's open to all majors. Everybody is eligible for it and everybody can get something from it. So even if you have just a small interest in learning about coastal systems, coastal studies, coastal processes, you can expand your knowledge of that as well as get some great life experience and work experience through internships, make great relationships with your fellow students and the faculty here and really enjoy a semester at the beach. Glaciers have fascinated me for a long time came across this artist residency and applied, and it was, it was really a life-changing experience. My name's Christina Lorena Weisner, and I am a sculptor and an associate professor of visual art here at the College of the Albemarle. 
This past June, I took part in the Arctic Circle Residency, which is an annual expeditionary program for both artists and scientists in which participants explore the high Arctic in and around Svalbard, Norway, and also in the Arctic Ocean. There were scientists and historians, mostly artists aboard, and although the landscape was nothing short of almost a sort of religious experience, um, it was really people and the exchange of ideas about this magnificent, unique place. That was probably the most powerful takeaway from that artist residency and certainly influenced the work in this show. Traditionally, sea marks are understood as landmarks, structures, and devices that usually provide warning or guiding signs to mariners, orange safety flags, channel markers, buoys, and beacons, just to name a few. But then there are also sea marks of a different sort, composed of items discarded on the shore or at sea, either intentionally or unintentionally. So these are things like umbrellas, beach chairs, coolers, flotation devices, other plastics. The exhibition entitled Sea Marks explores how two seemingly unrelated geographical locations, in this case, the Outer Banks and the North Pole, are actually inextricably entangled, connected by oceanic currents and atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide. These discarded materials, as most of us know, have accumulated in recent years to the extent that they have formed islands um, in the oceans and um, as I have now experienced firsthand, they're also found in some of the most isolated regions on Earth, such as the North Pole, either intact, um, broken up, or as microplastics. The body of work in this exhibit really explores uh, the deep geophysical time of the Arctic and its ice cap in comparison to the fleeting temporality of living beings. Um, and really how such notions of time coexist. Uh, and although humans don't typically inhabit this extreme space of the Arctic, uh, they nevertheless influence its status and are critically and inextricably affected by it, uh, especially those living in coastal communities like the Outer Banks. This show at COA has really started this conversation for me um, in my research on glaciers and the Arctic and comparing it to local communities. And so I'm hoping to work with scientists and incorporate that information into future iterations of this exhibition that I hope will travel throughout North Carolina and also nationally. I think the exchange of ideas that happens, either between artists and scientists or artists and historians, that conversation and that collaboration I think is really important. And I try to teach my students that working with people outside of your discipline can really change and empower your work in ways that you maybe couldn't have foreseen yourself. I started to work here in February, but I attended the January Board of Education meeting. And at that meeting, a student from First Flight High School got up and spoke, and basically the theme of her uh, talk that evening was student voice. So I started talking with Mr. Vastline about that as soon as I came. You know, sometimes in these meeting rooms, it's a lot of adults talking about what we're doing to students. And I, and I just really felt like the perspective that we would get from students about some of those very issues that were going to determine what they did on a daily basis would be really impactful. We did applications for our seniors and they interviewed lots of students, wonderful candidates. Each month they report out on board highlights that our principals provide. One of the challenges for them is to go out and find out what's going on in their school so that they can comment on important issues. I went through this interview process to become the student advisor to the Board of Education and I really wanted this position because I love representing my peers and I feel like I'm a student that's really involved in a lot of different groups like 
student athletes, AP students, foreign language students. I like being part of a lot of different groups and I liked how this position allowed me to represent each group. So after I was selected for this position, I was sworn into the Dare County Board of Education. At the meetings, we highlight each of the little pieces of each school in the system, and I get to just touch base with the community on all the highlights at all the different schools. At every board meeting, I give a little report on what's going on in all the schools. And I think that kind of helps them remember that what they do actually matters in our schools. Like, they're writing the policies, and. They're doing all this work, but it's actually coming into fruition. And so it kind of, I think it helps ground them a little bit into the actual reaps of their labor. I interviewed because I love doing so much here at the school, since I'm part of SGA, DECA, National Society, all of that. And so I felt like I wanted to do more. I'm really proud of the fact that I can show the voice of our school and our community at the Board of Education meetings because it's so important that they see the improvement and how good our school is. I've just as well started to feel more comfortable in like sharing things. So I've started sharing and talking to individual teachers here kind of that have talked to the board. And also just when people give their presentations and there's something that clicks for me or something that I think that, well, yeah, maybe that sounds good, but from a student's perspective, we might need to tweak it or come up with something new or look at it a different way because I think a student's perspective and a teacher's perspective and a board member's perspective, they're all really different and when they come together, I think that's when the good stuff happens. I think what we've seen from all three of these phenomenal students is that they've jumped into this with both feet and, and they see this as a real opportunity to have an impact on what goes on on the day-to-day -day basis in, in the schools and they take the opportunity to share their opinions and their feelings about what it's really like to be in school and that perspective is just dynamite for our board to be able to hear on a daily basis. <laughs>